are back with the Magic and Andrew MMA betting podcast. We have a very special guest today for UFC 268. We've got Big Ev here from Barstool. Thanks for joining us, my man. Appreciate you guys. I was I was saying before we started, obviously, Matt, I, I talk to Magic all the time in the DM, talk about the just the fights, contender series, all that. I said, he's a cult legend in the Barstool office. I just want that. I know he's the guys. I got Jack, Mac, Adam, Robbie, all big Magic guys over here. Thank you, man. Big, big shoot out here. <laughs> that's that's awesome yeah so again glad to have you ready to run through some ufc 268 predictions at the garden this weekend huge card two title fights two rematches um we're gonna do our usual thing start at the bottom of the card um, i'm gonna go on best fight odds order for those following along so od osborne versus cj vergara ev you know these guys what do you think i do i was talking to Madge. i know i know vergara obviously from the contender series I feel like he, that was pretty recently. I mean, he had that big he, – he just came forward just throwing big punches, knocked the guy out in the first round. I remember, I, if I remember correctly, he was a decent dog. And I know I've seen Ode Osborne a couple of times. I know he, he lost that flying knee last time, but he looked pretty good, I felt like, before that. I mean, this is kind of a tough one because I feel like it's tough to, like – these contenders here with guys, it's just so tough to kind of gauge him, I feel like. But I, but I feel like I still would take a shot at him as a dog, like just off just knee-jerk reaction. Yeah, oh, I, he just, I, he just he was just so game in that fight. Like he just he just came out ready to bring. Like he yeah, was like, he, he he went for it. He went for it. What do you got? Yeah, I played fight doesn't go the distance pretty big here. It's like minus one eighty something like that. Makes sense. I mean, Osborne is a uh, under machine. I think his last seven or eight hasn't gone past one round. And Vergara goes forward. It's all he knows. Like he's he's not good, but. He goes for it and strikes and has a little bit of power. I thought he was going to lose in contenders. He's, he's not good. But Osborne is a bit of a fraud himself, so I don't know. Osborne should be much faster and bigger and powerful. The guy is huge at flyweight, so yeah, fight doesn't go the distance makes sense. And I took Osborne round one small, plus 400. We'll see. Cool. Yeah, I agree with a lot of, with a lot of what you guys said. Um, I played Osborne back at minus one fifty five. I think he should be a wider favorite here. I, I think Vegara is a fraud. No disrespect, but I don't think he really belongs in the UFC. Um, and I also am on that under two five as well. Like you said, Osborne fights usually end pretty early, and um, I'm not sure why this one was so close to even. So I took the under two five. I took Osborne money line. So this, this should be a good one um, from a betting perspective. Next up, we've got Bruno Souza stepping up on short notice to take on Melzik. I'm not going to even try to pronounce his last name, but Melzik had a three to one favorite. Uh, Ev, you know these guys? Nah, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with these guys. I feel like I saw – was Bruno on the Contender Series? No, so he was in LFA, and um, he's stepping up on short notice. He's kind of, he's a striker. Um, in my opinion, he's kind of hittable. I, I don't know. I think this line's about right, but I think the time the time to fade Melzik will come, but it's not right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm really waiting to fade Melzik, and when the fight got announced, I, I, it was originally against TJ Laramie, who can't wrestle a bit, and I was willing to play Laramie at plus 200, something mm -hmm. like that. But this guy, Sosa, doesn't really wrestle or anything. He doesn't have power. And he goes in and out. He's hitable. I mean, Melzik should win this, but Melzik by knockout plus 150 is a little bit of use. I have nothing here. I was, like, doing the tape and expecting this guy to, to grapple because I think Melzik is a huge fraud. I mean, he's powerful and a powerful kicker, but he doesn't have really anything. All he does is rush into the clinch, go for elbows and power kick. Somebody's going to choke his ass very soon, but it's not going to be the Saturday, I think. Cool. Yeah. Um, so we could roll through that one pretty quick. We've got the people's main event, Chris Barnett versus John Barnett. <laughs> John, John's retirement is, fight. This is the fight of the decade. Like, for real. It, it's it's uh, Bilante's retirement <laughs> fight, right? Yeah. I, I mean, it's so rare that you get a guy literally with my measurables that's legitimately <laughs> Like, Chris Barnett, little, like, literally... I'm like an inch taller. I, I weigh more than him, but still, he literally looks like me just getting in a in a professional fist fight. It's incredible. You, you could probably incredible at this point. Yeah, you would be I mean, competitive. If, if guy, you should buy five rounds, I will take you live. He, like he, five he, minutes. Five minutes, I will take you live. One hundred percent. This guy can see the last tank. <laughs> just a five nine heavyweight. I mean, it's like how can you not love the guy? Yeah. No. Well said. Um, you, you you have any bets on this fight or a prediction? I. I gotta take a shot at the. I gotta take a shot at him. 
out of just respect for like myself and just I, he, he'll, he's getting a unit from me, like no question, no question. <laughs> like win, lose, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to die in that sword. He gets knocked out in the first, like I'm good. I love that. Magic, what do you think? Man, I, I spent like 20 minutes thinking about this. Like who is going to have a heart attack first? Because Bilante last, last couple <laughs> fights have been like, Mom, come on, what the fuck? But then you see this guy, this, this guy can only go five minutes. It's kind of crazy. He gas is out of doing anything, just standing up there. I may have done something really stupid here. I don't know. We'll see. But I took Bilante round three plus plus, plus 1300 small and Bilante by submission. I know I know the guy hasn't submitted anyone since George Bush was the president, but I mean this guy just dies. All you need to do is put your arm around his neck and submit him. Didn't uh did, he fought Ben Rothwell, right? Am I crazy with he did, right? Yeah, man, and Rothwell by submission was plus 20. In the second round, I, I was on that. Just unbelievable mismatch in the cage. Like, he's so tiny. But it's crazy because his arms are pretty long. Like, I remember him just throwing those big, like, I, I'm, he, he just hits. leans forward and throws that big, like, overhand <laughs> right. <laughs> he hits kind of hard, too. Yeah, no, he's, he definitely got his. He has, he has hands. Like, I remember watching the highlights of him before that fight. He was knocking people out. I'm like, that would do what he fought in Japan or something, right? I remember. Or he fought, like, in Asia or something. Yeah, Before he has got a, a bunch of nobodies, but yeah, he has some power. I'm, I, I'm like my reasoning for this bet is Bilante has maybe a couple minutes more cardio, and that's the fight. <laughs> 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 that's it. <laughs> yeah, I um I agree with what a lot of a lot of what you guys said. I took um, Volante earlier in the week at plus one sixteen. Like, obviously, how confident can you be in John Volante at this point in his career? But I just think he's better than this guy. Um, unless he's completely checked out for his retirement fight, he should win. But again, this is not prime John, prime John Volante with a six pack. This is. John Volante with six cases of tacos and a beer. So we'll see what happens. But I like Volante. I was if, if Barnett can somehow, like some by the grace of God, land like a magical right hand, he's gonna be like the king of the universe on, on <laughs> Sunday. I promise you. If that guy lands a knockout at the garden, yeah, it's going he's to gonna, be he's crazy. gonna be an internet, he's gonna be an internet legend like um, immediately. And then, yeah. and then they are going to match him against someone like Volkov. <laughs> He's oh going to God. fucking die. <laughs> Could you imagine that? That shouldn't even be sanctioned. Man, I would pay a lot of money to watch this fight. This guy fight and gun. Francis and Oh, my God. Oh my God. You're sick of that. You're sick of Maybe that. like three times in a row, you know? Like, wake the guy up and go again. Three times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's sick. Um... This one's a fun one. We've got the debut of Ian Gary versus Jordan Williams. Right now, Gary's about a four to one favorite. Uh, have you you agree with this line? Yeah, I mean, I feel like he's gonna smoke him. I mean, he's gonna. Ro I mean, I just obviously making this debut like this, the Garden, all the hype around him. Like this is something you have to. He has to show up. Like he has to show up for this submission. Maybe I, I haven't even I haven't looked too much at this. Uh, I'm just like the. The uh, prop lines in this, but I mean, I feel like he's gonna have his way with them on the ground. I don't think it should be too crazy. Cool, Magic. What do you think? Yeah, I think he's going to go through him like a smoke him, but inside the distance is almost plus minus two hundred. I mean, I cannot play that, but I think he's going to smoke the guy. Jordan Williams is not really good. His striking is not good. His defense is bad, and on the ground. Uh, young Gary should have a massive edge. I took I took some Gary by submission plus six hundred. I think it's probably a 50-50 outcome with the knockout. The line makes no sense. I think he takes his back or mounts him and pounds him out or finds a choke. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. This guy is, is like uh, engaged to Lila, the Cage Warriors presenter. When when this this happen, she's like the coldest <laughs> milf in MMA. But th this girl was married. I found out yesterday. D didn't you see the Ian Gary feature in the US channel? Yeah, I, I didn't know that he was dating her either or engaged or whatever, but good for him. <laughs> how, how much older is she? I don't know. She must be like 38 or 40. God bless. She's, she's hot. Shout out. Lila and Lee. What, what, what is her name like? Shout know. out. She's hot. Yeah. She's fine. I approve. I, I love just, just a little, like a little seasoned skin. Not too crazy, not wrinkly, but just seasoned, like just a little like. 
<laughs> That's funny. Yeah, um, I'm going to go against the grain a little bit here. I haven't bet it yet, but I think Jordan Williams at this price is worth a dog shot. Um, Gary's talented, but he's still young. He's raw. He's 23. This will be probably his hardest fight yet. Um, I was on Mickey Gall against Jordan Williams in his last fight at, like, plus 171. Um, and I think it's a little bit of an overreaction here. Like, yeah, I, I agree that Gary should be favored, but I'd probably have him, like, minus 250 here. I think at minus 400, the line might be getting a little crazy. And I also think as fight day gets closer, I, I know it's Thursday night right now, but maybe by the time they get in the cage, Williams could be as high as, like, plus 350, maybe even close to plus 400. So I'll probably take a late shot on him, but obviously not a super strong conviction. Um this next fight, though, I believe there will be some st super strong convictions here. We've got Edmund Shabazian taking on Nasruddin Mavov. Ev, what do you got? I mean, this is back against the wall for Shabazian. I mean, this is the one that he's got. He has to fit. I mean, he, like, he looks so good early in that fight against Hermanson. Or Hermanson, I mean, excuse me. But, I mean, like, it just feels like they, they just keep giving him, like, even though it's, like, an unranked guy, it's still, like, a tough fight, I feel like, like, two, like, stand-up guys. But, I mean... I think Shabazzian's going to get it done. Like, I think as a pick him, I think – I just feel more comfortable taking him. No, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Magic, you too? Yeah, I think he's going to win, but I, I don't have nothing here. I was thinking about Shabazzian inside the distance, but the line is not the price I want. It's like plus 200, and I don't know. Imabov is a talented striker. I am not sure about Shabazzian's team. I mean, I don't know what the UFC is doing with this kid. Once that that we saw that Brunson was too much, why give him a Hermanson that is a powerful top wrestler? This fight, him, I don't think he's getting cut if he loses, but he may be. This is going to be a must win for him. I passed. I think he's going to get it done. And as the dog, he was probably the side, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I took a shot on um on Shabazi when he was plus 130. Um, I, I have him as a slight favorite here. I think he wins round one at a pretty high clip, and I think round, it really is going to come down to round two because I think Imavov, if he's still alive in round three, will probably – probably is a cardio edge. Um, I've seen some people saying Imavov's going to wrestle him just like Hermanson and Brunson did, but those are two of the top guys in the division. I'm, I'm just not convinced that Imavov yeah. is there. I don't um, think Imavov can wrestle him. Imavov is not a good wrestler. And he's a tall, lanky guy. And Sebastian is huge for middleweight. I don't think so. Yeah, and I think, like, I don't know. I, I think he's a high chance of finishing him, too. I mean, Sebastian is a good finisher. The last time I was at the Garden, he finished um, Brad Tavares pretty early, which is, which is a solid yeah, win. He, so. he looked like a million dollars doing it. Yeah. I was on him in round one and everything, and he looked like the second coming of Jesus Christ. He smoked yeah. the guy. Dude, there, he had a lot of fans there, too. It was crazy. He got, like, a... a nuts for Sabaton. I bet it'll be the same on Saturday. But on to the next one. Um, before I hit this, thank you all for tuning in. We've got 80 live viewers right now, which is super cool. Thanks again, Ev, for coming on. I'm going to get your opinions on this next fight, Phil Hawes versus Chris Curtis. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't know, I don't know a ton about Chris Curtis. I mean, I feel like this is like Hawes should be able to wrestle him and just kind of like just lay, just lay out him for three rounds. Like, I don't – I don't like love anything like gambling wise. Like he's a huge favorite. I don't and I don't like love Hawes. Like I'm not crazy about Hawes. I just don't know the other guy that well. I mean, I'm probably not gonna play anything in this. Cool. Magic, what what about you? Yeah, I know we have talked about this on the DMs, Andrew, but I had to do this, man. I played Chris Curtis by knockout, round three. <laughs> <laughs> All the good things. Like, yeah. Phil Coates is a massive fraud, man. I don't know how he has managed to win these two fights. I was going to bet they don't win big against him. He has no chin. He has no cardio. He has nothing outside of power wrestling and a big right hand. If Chris Curtis goes out and fucking gets assassinated in round one, okay, shame on me. But if this goes past five minutes, I mean, Curtis round three is plus 3,300. Come on, man. I have to take it. <laughs> a knockout plus 700. This guy has a, a ton of knockouts after the first round, second, third rounds. So, yeah, he's not special or anything, but he's solid. And if he can survive five minutes, I really like him here. It's all the value in the world, I feel. Yeah, so I don't know. Am I dying to play Phil Hawes at minus 350? Not at all. Um, I'm higher on him than most. I, I played him against Ivovov pretty big a couple fights ago, but I was going to play Duran Wynn against him here. I'm just, I don't know. Ever since I've watched Curtis just get taken down and held down over and over and over, I just think Hawes could do that too. And I mean, I played Hawes' submission at plus 2,000 against Ivovov. So watching him not being able to do an arm triangle still gives me 
uh, nightmares to this day. But I'm, I'm not taking the shot on Curtis. I think the line's more or less right. And, um, yeah, I think if Hawes wrestles here, he probably looks like a – covers a massive favorite. And he also has that, that stupid explosiveness, too. So he could also just blast Curtis out right away. Because he's a weight class bigger, too. Listen to me, man. Chris Curtis goes out here, weathers the storm. Round three, epic comeback. I win 45 for 50 units. Trust me, it's going to happen. <laughs> Third round knockout, ship it for the boys. Chris Curtis. <laughs> Willing into existence. Hell yeah. Um, now we get on to one of the... One of the bigger fights um, that we've hit so far, we have the return of Ally Quinta taking on Bobby Green. Ev, you rolling with the New Yorker? Have to. I'm a New York guy. <laughs> I just think as a dog, like, I don't, like, Bobby Green, I mean, he's been on, like, a nice little run, whatever. I don't, I'm still just not crazy about him in general. I mean, I know Ally Quinta hasn't fought in a while. But, I mean, I'll take a shot at him as a dog here. He also was, he also was hilarious in the uh, in the one interview the other day with fucking Aljamain in the back, but. No, I, I like Al. I like Ali Quinta. I'll take him plus what is he, 135, 140 right now? Yeah, something like that. Man, it feels like Yaquinta hasn't fought forever, and when I checked, it's only been two years. It's kind of crazy, only two years. It feels like five or six years. Yeah. I, I took him here by decision, plus 300, why not? Like, Bobby Green is going to do what Bobby Green always does. He's going to go out there and do stupid things like, not don't do not do anything, arm punches, some jabs. I mean, he Jacuinta throws more strikes than him per minute and has some decent boxing and a very good chin. I mean, this is going to go three rounds, I think. And Jacuinta is going to probably be more active. I don't really think Green can wrestle him. Why not? Plus three hundred makes sense. Like Bobby Green just has an uncanny ability to make fights stupidly close. So I'll take it. Yeah, so I, I took Green at minus 146 here earlier in the week. I think probably like a little a little south of minus 200 is probably right. I, I'm just not a not a fan of playing guys coming coming off a layoff like this. I mean, he's he's in he's a real estate guy now, and I honestly I hate saying this because I like Al, but I think his run even when he was winning in the UFC was a little bit overrated. I mean, he lost to Cowboy Cerrone in 2019, and we've we've all seen how Cowboy's career has went since then, but. Yeah, I, I, again, it's not like the strongest conviction ever. I, I just like Green to get it done. He's pretty well-rounded. He's fought six times since Al's even stepped in the cage once. And uh, I don't know. Part of me thinks this could be Al, Al's last fight. I don't, I don't know. He hasn't said that, but I kind of get that vibe. I don't know if either of you agree with that or not. I, but. I think Jacuinta is going to retire, and I think Frankie Edgar is going to retire on Saturday. I think after, both of them. After he knocks Marlon Vera out, um, we'll get to that. Yeah, he's, he's 100% not knocking Marlon Vera out. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of knockouts, we have Alex Pereira versus Andres Mikulides. Ev, who you got? I mean, I, th- I honestly, I don't, I don't know too much about uh, the other about the Greek guy. I don't know, I don't know too much about him. I know Pereira, obviously, the kickboxing background and all that. I mean, maybe hit by knockout or something makes sense. I don't like love playing him like minus like two fifty plus. Maybe hit by knockout or something. Not like I just don't know the other guy that well either, so I'm not like super. Not super convicted on it, but that would probably be where I'd go. Cool. Magic, how about you? Yeah, I was not going to have anything here, but but I expected fight not doesn't go the distance to be something like minus 500, and it's minus 200. I took it big. Like, why is this minus 200? Pereira has four fights, and he may straight up be the biggest hitter in the UFC, just out of nowhere. He touches people, and people fucking die. That, is, that knockout he had at LFA was a scary man. I thought the guy had died. And Mikhailidis has, I think, 11 finishes in 12 wins and has been stopped in four loses by knockout. I mean, someone is going out and there are a lot of questions about Pereira's grappling and takedown defense. I took a like, small Mikhailidis by submission, plus 1,800. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to take it, but plus 1,800 against a guy that probably is a white belt. I don't know, man. I have to take that shot small. We'll see. Yeah, I, I agree with what a lot with a lot of what you guys said here. Um, I'm, this is probably how I'm going to approach this, right? I'm going to wait until Saturday night. I think people are going to keep putting Pereira in the parlays. He's going to get – the narrative is going to be he's the guy that knocked out Izzy, and then I'm going to take take the shot on Mikulidis on fight day at probably a crazy price. Um, like I said, Pereira could go out there and knock him out. He obviously is a super credentialed kickboxer. 
Um, but like Magic said, he might be a white belt too. I mean, I, I, there's, I only found tape of him defending a takedown like once, and it was a few years ago, and it looked pretty bad. Not to say it hasn't gotten better since then, because it probably has. But yeah. he's been really training with him. he's been training with Glover in the in Glover's garage. Maybe he's a second degree black belt. You better be <laughs> careful. Glover is untouchable. Yeah, he's a beast. He he, he cashed that big big uh underdog money for us last week so we love him here um but yeah i'm probably gonna take a shot on michaelitis also if fight doesn't go the distance like how does this fight go the distance he's either gonna get knocked out or he's gonna out grapple him and finish him so i, I like that if you want to throw minus 200 minus 225 into a parlay as well and um moving on we've got some big fights coming up um frankie the answer edgar ufc legend future hall of famer Taking on Cheeto Vera, Ev, New Jersey all day or what? I am. I'm in Jersey right now. I live in Hoboken. Like, I, I like Frankie Edgar. I like him a lot. I don't know. I just think this is a tough This is a tough matchup for him. Like, he's come, obviously – like, I love him in the guard. I love everything about him. Just coming off that really, really bad knockout. I don't know. I guess I'd have to go with Vera. Maybe Vera inside the distance or something. But I'm just I'm a Frank. I'm not like super like I just think Frankie's got that look like you never know. Like he he had that good performance against Pedro Munoz, which I mean even that that decision some could say was questionable. I'd probably go Vera, I guess. So I, I love Frankie, but I think this is a tough fight for him. Yeah, I have a feeling um your buddy Magic's gonna agree with you here. Yeah, it took better inside the distance, but not big. Couple units plus two hundred. Makes sense. I mean, Frank is 40 and Vera is going to put it on him. If Frank is to win this, he's, he's, he's going to need takedowns and top control, which could happen. It, it could very well happen, but I think he's going to get hurt and finished. But I, I am not extremely confident. I can see Vera, like, fucking up. Yeah. Um, that's a cl classic one of these. We'll see. <laughs> well, we are getting a ton of value here. <laughs> we will see. Yeah, um, I took the shot on Edgar Small, money line plus 150, and then I took him by decision plus 260. I think his path to victory here is pretty clear. He has to keep the movement going, not not be still target for Vera. Vera obviously has the finishing upside, but I like the wrestling aspect from Frankie. Um, I didn't think – I rewatched that Vera versus Davy Grant fight. I didn't think he looked that great in it, honestly. I thought even in a loss he looked better against Aldo. But nonetheless, obviously age is a concern for Frankie. Durability coming off that knockout loss to Sanhagen. But he has taken off an adequate amount of time since then. So I, I'm, I'm comfortable taking a small shot on him here. And I, I'd love to see him get, get it done inside the garden. Um, all right, this one is really the people's – a fight people have been calling for since these two ever stepped foot inside a cage. Um, Justin Gaethje versus Michael Chandler. I mean, what can you say? I've... I mean, for me, it's pretty simple in this. Like, I just trust Gaethje's chin way more. Like, I just, I just think Chandler, even though he's good, he throws a big right, big. He's got big hands. I mean, I just like, I just can see, I can just see him get knocked out so much more easily than I see Gaethje. Like when you've seen Gaethje get knocked out, it's been in these like slugfest wars where like I can see Chandler getting knocked out with like one punch and I don't see that as much with Gaethje like it, it obviously could happen like Chandler has that kind of power but I think I just trust Gaethje more he's fought better competition I think for a little longer so I mean I like Gaethje cool magic you you, you on the Gaethje bandwagon no <laughs> um this fight I mean the 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 biggest takeaway I have from this is like why is fight doesn't go the distance minus two sixty? It should be minus one thousand. Like I have it everywhere. I'm massive on this fight doesn't go the distance. I have like ten or eleven units compromised on this fight not going ten, uh, three rounds across three or four beds. I mean, I don't think this is going past five minutes. Hell, I don't think it's going past two minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is going to fucking die. Chandler is going to go forward. I, I know people are expecting Gechi to meet him in the middle. I think Gechi is going to go backwards, try to circle, mm -hmm. leg kick him. And he's a good counter puncher, has good power. He has a better chin than Chandler. I don't trust Chandler's chin. I mean, Gechi doesn't have the best chin either. He gets rocked and he cannot afford to get rocked in this fight. 
So yeah, I played a little bit of Chandler round one and inside the distance because I think the lines are ridiculous. Like Gates is at minus two fifty favorite, right? Or closing in on that. Yeah, He's getting up there. Yeah, the line's gone crazy. Min this minus year. two, minus two twenty. Chandler inside the distance plus three fifty almost round one plus plus six fifty or something like that. I mean, I have to take that because I don't think the guy is going to do it. But if Chandler goes out and shoots a takedown. Man, he's minus 400 life instantly if he gets on top. Gage is like a, le a legit white belt. He, the guy looks like if you, you took him down, you could out grapple him. The, I mean, I know it was Habib Nurmagomedov, but the second time he took the guy down, it was he was just casually mounting him like, oh, there is no guard at all here. I will just casually go over your leg. And now this other one, it was two seconds into submission. If Chandler gets him down, he's going to pass and get an arm triangle easily, I think. But we'll see. So, yeah, small on Chandler, props, and massive on, on fight doesn't go the distance. I could yeah. see Chandler coming out and just bombing him out, like something crazy. Boom, boom, and done. But I trust Gage's team more. I'm playing the value. Yeah, well said. I, I took um, fight doesn't go the distance pretty big, too, like minus 260. I expected that to be like minus 500. Um, to your point earlier, I don't see it going five minutes, and I might not even see it going two minutes. I think Chandler's going to try to get in his face early, and I think he needs to do that as well because if he kind of just sits at range, Gaethje's going to um, tune yeah, him he, up. He away. cannot afford to stay back. Chandler is the one that, need, that needs to go forward here. Gaethje can choose, but Chandler cannot choose because his he, legs are there to be kicked. I feel like he's shown pretty willing to do that. Like you saw in the hooker fight, even even against Oliver, like he seems pretty like willing to just like come. I don't forward. know how, how he managed to lose the Oliveira fight. That was crazy. I was on him and on him early and what the fuck are you doing? Let him up or something. He was out. He face planted Oliveira and then got caught in the first exchange and people were acting like Oliveira was the bet of the year when Chandler escaped mm -hmm. his his back take, then almost knocked him out. That that was crazy. I would make him like a minus two hundred minus two hundred favorite if if that rematch happens against Oliveira. Yeah, um, that was an all-time choke job by Chandler. Like I said, uh, yeah, go ahead, Ev. No, no, I agree with you. I mean, he just got caught. He just got caught with that left, and that was it. Yeah, so um, just to summarize, I like fight doesn't go the distance, but I do think the money line is getting a little wide, too. I, if Chandler touches, like, plus 200, I'm definitely going to get involved there. Um, now we've got the the – fight that I am looking forward to most is kind of flying under the radar. I don't mean looking forward to most of the part, but just like... <laughs> this guy uh, comes out here and says this is the fight he's looking forward more when we have Usman versus Covington too, and he's like the biggest Colby fan in the world. No, <laughs> so, I, I, what no, a fucking liar. <laughs> no, I, I, I said that incorrectly. I meant to say like a fight, a fight that's flying under the radar that I'm really excited Billy, for. Billy Q is this one? Yeah, Billy Q versus Shane Burgo. So I think this fight's – sorry, if you go first, then Magic, then me. Well, I'll say full disclosure. So me and Shane Burgo screw up like 10 minutes from each other. We actually we have, the, we have the same barber back home. So I'm a big Shane Burgos guy just off the rip. But also, I mean, I just think these two – like this is one of those fights obviously talk where like it's like it, it can't be bad. Like it's impossible. They're both going to meet in the center and they're going to exchange – I think I – and it's also funny because I also – I met Billy Q. He came in the office like two days ago. Really nice guy. He's crazy because he looks like some kid that would have just sat next to you in like science class in seventh grade. Like he has a little like flipped up hair. He's just wearing like a North Face like zip up with like some like jeans. Like, yeah, he looks 16. He looks – he's, yeah, he like, he's like, he looks like 5'10", <laughs> like 100, like 60 pounds walking around. Like very – just like as average as average gets. But he's a killer. I mean, but I still – not just my bias with Burgos with this having some like mutual friends, or whatever, but I just think the competition he's fought is way better. They both need the win. I mean, he needs it real, real bad. Obviously, the last like that last loss, it was a great fight, but the last loss was tough. He got hit a ton in that weird like delayed knockout. I've never seen anything like that in my life, but it's tough because the line's so big. Like, I don't love betting him in the spot at, at minus 200. Maybe take a shot at him by decision, I think makes sense. But no, I definitely – I like Burgos. Like, regardless of odds, I like Burgos to win the fight. I don't love laying, like, 200 with him. Like I said, maybe, maybe play it by decision. Yeah, yeah when this fight got announced, I was expecting the line to be, like, pick him or something like that. I was talking with about this with, with C on Twitter. She's my man. Shout out to C. Everybody knows him on MMA Twitter. He's, like, the biggest Shane Burgos fan in the world. 
the guy thinks Burgos is the best fighter in the UFC, straight up. He will, he will give Habib hell, according to him. <laughs> <laughs> but when the line got out, I was like, what is this line? I'm going to have to play Billy Q here. Because uh, as Seth said, that knockout, man, I have never seen anything like that. It was like six or, six or seven seconds and his, his brain sh shut, like, shut down. Barbosa didn't touch him before going out. It was after he went out that he punched him again. I don't know what the referee was doing. And he only took six months off. I thought I think he should have taken like a full year or something. That's concerning. Billy Q is going to go forward. Both guys are going to get hit. I don't know. Man. I played a little bit of Billy Q inside the distance. Round three, I played that too. And round three or the round three or decision plus three hundred for Billy Q is a really good bet, I think. Yeah, no, I, I think that very valid concerns if you're on the Burgos side is, is that weird KO against Barboza. I've never really seen anything like that. I wanted to see him take a full year off after, so hopefully he's healthy coming into it. I mean, if, if Burgos is perfectly fine here, I think he should win this fight. I think he's much better than Billy Q on the feet. And I think um, I, I'm actually going to approach this fight from a sneaky prop angle. I like Burgos' submission at like plus a thousand. I think he's going to hurt. Um, he's going to hurt Billy Q on the feet, and then Billy Q is going to kind of dive at the legs. I think he could take his neck. I think that's an interesting. I I, I don't think he's going to submit Billy Q. If anything, I think Billy is going to submit him. But Burgos is an underrated grappler. But the grappling upside in general, I think it's in Billy Q's side. He's tenacious with the grappling. He goes forward, goes for the takedown. Like the, the pace is crazy. I think yeah. he can he can outpace Burgos and Burgos is a cardio machine. Yeah, I mean he's the better grappler. I'm saying once he's hurt, I think he, his just yeah, instinct yeah, is gonna be to, his instinct's gonna be to dive at the leg. So I, I think that's not bad if you want to take the half unit unit shot on it. But now we are moving on. We've got two title fights. Rose Nami Yunus knocked out Weili Zhang in about 90 seconds in this last fight. She was the underdog. Um, she's the underdog again. Um, F, do you agree with this line? Yeah, yeah. Mm, it's tough, well, guys. It's it's weird when somebody was you were getting plus like 170 value just like a few months ago, and now it's a pick 'em fight. I mean, obviously she lands the big kick. Like I don't know how often that happens. Like I I like Rose. Like I like Thug Rose. Loved her outfit at the press conference today. I was digging the chain. I know Magic is not going to agree with me. I fucking I'm hate Rose Nama Yunus. <laughs> She's just the I, worst. Yeah, I I mean, I guess it like gun to gun to my head, I'm picking Rose for sure. I just think kind of that mental edge. Like I just I, and I just I don't know, Zhang, I just don't know what's been going on with her. Even like the the embeds leading up to it. I don't know. She just she just looks off to me. And it's not the haircut. I don't know what it is. She just seems <laughs> like it just she just doesn't seem like the same. I don't know. There's something like just about her demeanor and like her presence. I don't know if maybe she just got spooked, never been like just knocked out like that. Her vibe is different. He, she, she used to be like all energetic and now she's like quiet, relaxed. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But man, Rose, Nama traumas is the worst. It's always about her traumas and shit. Oh, Connor <laughs> threw a dolly at me. Oh, this. I'm scared. I'm anxious. Fuck off. Everybody's fighting in the UFC. Everybody gets anxious. I mean, what the fuck? She's the worst. I don't like her. I don't like her fiance or whatever he is. I think well, I'm going to shut up before the, the podcast channel gets shut down and everything. Man, she's the worst. I hope Thang like takes her head off. And regarding the first fight, I have seen some takes that are like, are, are people fucking blind or are, are, are I, am I missing anything? Because it was like, what it was, two minutes, three minutes, less than that, right? And was. There, there was nothing happening there. Thang was power kicking her and winning the round and randomly got kicked in the head. I mean, not taking uh, anything away from Rose, but a lot of things have to go together for that knockout to happen. That, that is not very re replicable outcome, I think. It was, it was beautiful. It was a perfect kick, clean knockout. I don't think that's going to happen again. I, I made the same plays I, I made the first time. A little bit of thunk by inside the distance and late round props. I think Rose cannot afford to get into a war with thunk like Joanna did. She's going to get break, broken if, if that happens. And late round props are huge. And I also took fight doesn't go the distance big because I, I think there is huge finishing upside for both here over five rounds. I don't understand why anyone, any, uh, not anyone, everyone is talking about playing the over four and a half. Like, what the fuck? 
Yeah, everyone on Twitter is talking about this. Really? No, that's weird. I um I played the under four or five. That's actually the, all I have on the fight right now at plus money. I don't know why it's plus money. I think Rose looked really good in her um in her fight against second fight against Andrade. I expected Andrade to win that, and I think she's just made improvements over the years. But I think she's just gonna get in deep shit late, for lack of a yeah. better term, against Zhang. I mean, I played the Zhang late props last time. I probably will again this time, but I will give credence to that. Um, to that head kick and Rose does have a nice jab. So I, th I think the key for Zhang in this fight is to, is to slow down the movement of Rose, right? That's when she's most dangerous. And I think she was trying to do that in the first fight. She kept going to that inside low kick, inside low kick, inside low kick. And um, I think if she, if Zhang can slow the movement down, that Rose will be in trouble late. Yeah. But I think either way, this fight's m way more likely to finish than it isn't. So I'm on the under four or five myself. Zhang was looking good the first time. I mean, I don't know what people are saying here. She was looking good and she was doing the right things and randomly got killed. Okay, shit happens. But if this if this gets into a physical fight, a war late, Rose is not built for that fight. If the Andrade fight had two more rounds, Rose would have fucking died. Like died. So I don't know what people are seeing here. I, I can see a finish for Rose like a club and soup or something like that. She probably has some grappling upside. It's not that Thang is a bad grappler, but Rose is she's a sleek on the mat. Yeah. It's a good fight. Yeah, um, I was on Andrade both fights against Rose. And I, I think she would, I think she'd beat her in a five rounder, but three rounds. Uh, five round fight, Andrade wins against Rose ten out of ten times. People can say whatever, I'm willing to die on that hill. Andrade <laughs> is, is impossible to kill by Rose Namayunas and she just goes forward until she kills you. Yeah, so only one fight left to break down. We have the rematch. We have Kamaru Usman, the current number one pound for pound fighter in the world. What is this guy talking about? Peter Jan fought last week. Did, did you miss that the, fight? I'm talking about the rankings. So we have Usman, who is taking on his hardest fight to date, Colby Covington. Um, Ev, I'll let you kick this one off. We've got a banger here. I'll just get right to the point. I like Usman. I mean, it, I, it's tough. Like, I feel like I've seen a lot of people like Colby at the at the big, like plus money, plus two fifty. And I don't really, I don't, I'm, not, I don't like playing Usman at minus like 300, 300 plus. I'm very lucky not to, not to plug too crazy on the Barstool Sports, but it's boosted. Usman by KO plus two sixty eight. I feel like that's that's a no brainer. A five round fight. Yeah, I, where do I you get that line? What's up? Usman by knockout plus two sixty. Plus two sixty eight. What is that? What is Barstool? Exclusive. Exclusives in the. Just I cannot the, use that. Maybe you have to click. Click the exclusive tabs. Yeah, but I'm in Spain, man. Yeah, <laughs> there is no, no Barstool. I hear, no, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah. So I it, I know that's like that's a luxury on the states, <laughs> the ten states win. But I mean, for me, even, but even regardless, what is around? I think plus one fifty. It is not not just normal like all the books. I just think he's he's just gotten so much better. Like we've just it's it's hard to gauge because we've seen him fight so many times since that last fight where Kobe will we've only seen him fight once. Where I mean he dominated Woodley, but I mean Woodley's got dominated by everybody's fault the last few fights. I mean, I just trust Usman more. Like I think I think if he went, like I think he could win obviously by decision or by finish. I'll take him inside the by knockout. I think that that's that's what I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play him by knockout, Usman. Cool. Magic. Go ahead. Go no, speed. I'm going to yeah. let you start. You have no, probably I been thinking about this round for 20 minutes, man. I want to close this one out. <laughs> Martin Fake News, man, is going to fucking beat the dog shit out of Colby Covington. And I don't <laughs> like the guy. I don't like the guy. And if Covington won, it would probably be good for the UFC and for the division. And the press conference would, would be fucking bonkers. But, man, Usman is going to destroy this guy. I know you are going to be crying Saturday, probably. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about you, Andrew. I care about you. <laughs> <laughs> How is Colby going to win this? I feel like we will be arguing about this fight for 20 minutes. <laughs> like, what is Colby going to do this time? Because Usman has improved a lot. I know people are saying he... Some, are, some people are saying he didn't improve. Some think he didn't. I mean, he has improved massively in his striking. These two are not good strikers. They made each other look good because they were beating the shit out of each other. But they are not good. But since that since that time, Usman has evolved a lot. He he now knows how to use the jab, how to use his length, 
how to set up the right hand. He's he's fucking huge. He's massive. The physicality. Colby probably cannot out wrestle him. Colby cannot even finish his dinner, man. How is he going to win this fight? Like I don't trust Usman's chin at all. But the guy has he recovered so fast against Bams. You know what I mean? His cardio is on point. He's on all the use, all the drugs in existence. Kamar Usman has them. Like, I don't know, man. I think he's going to fucking smash Colby. I'm massive on Usman props. Inside the distance, round four, round five. Also massive on fight doesn't go to the to decision. Just in case Covington hits, I don't know, a spinning kick or something. But yeah, Covington is going to die. What is he going to do differently here? I think he I think his only two options, if I was his trainer, would be Colby go for broke in round one, like go for broke, make this a bar brawl and whatever happens, happens. Or I think if if he has maybe a small edge somewhere, it may be pure cardio. I don't know, maybe a, a little bit of edge there. So try to wrestle him. I don't care if you don't take him down, try to wrestle him, make all that muscle, you know, make him carry all, the, all that muscle through a lot of action and pace, and we will see after that, but I think he's going to die anyway. I mean, he's going to beat him, like, it's going to be a brutal stoppage. Much worse than the first time, Andrew. I'm, like, concerned about you. We can talk after the fight. I know it's late for me, it's, like, 7 a.m., but we can talk if you need it. <laughs> All right, so before, before I get into character here, we have 87 live live uh, viewers right now. That's a record, man, yeah, because we, we have a superstar here today. That, that was my next yeah, one. Like superstar. We've got, we've got Big Ab. Appreciate <laughs> you joining, on, joining us, brother. Everyone go give him a follow. We'll put his information in the description after this. Um, all right, my main event breakdown. I think if someone, I think if someone told, if someone shut the TV off after the fourth round of this last fight and said that one of these guys is going to be minus three hundred in a rematch, you would have said they're fucking crazy. There's no oh, way. Um, yeah, no, you wouldn't have. Um, there. So obviously, first fight. I think the, the like the real reason Usman won that fight, the difference maker, was the body work. I think that really paid off in that fifth round. Colby obviously had some success in that first round. Really the way to score that fight was Colby won round one, Usman won round three, round two and four, toss up, round five, obviously we know what happened. Um, here we are two years later, everyone's talking about Usman's improvements. And yeah, he probably has improved, but I think to assume that Colby hasn't improved over two years is kind of crazy. And it's not kind of crazy, it's crazy. Um, I, I don't know. I sat out this fight the first time. I had no bets on this fight. And pe some people think that I'm like, oh, I'm a Colby fan. That's why I'm betting this fight. I haven't bet on Colby since June 2018 when he was an underdog to RDA. So no bias here. I think that Colby is 100% the side at plus 250. And I think we're, um, even though the city never sleeps, Marty Fake Newsman's taking a nap on Saturday night. So I've got Colby. I think plus 250 is a solid line. And uh I think he's gonna he's gonna finish this one via uh, head kick. The first fight, I have discussed this with people on Twitter about seventy times. I mean, people are stupid. I don't know why I discuss anything with them on Twitter. But uh, what are people seeing in the first fight? I don't care about the scoring. The thing for the, the big thing for me was that after eight nine minutes, Colby was breaking down bad. And props to him. The guy has huge heart. There is no quit on the guy, but he got a fucking beating. I mean, I had the fight. I the first fight the, uh, when when they were fighting live, I had it three to one for Usman. I don't know if it could have been two two or, or even three one for Covington, but the best the best he could have hoped for was a draw after the the five round the fifth round. You know what I mean? He was not winning that fight. I mean, I, I don't think he can go five rounds striking with Usman. I just want to say that since. I started that Colby rant. We're at 96 viewers right now, which is a record. So <laughs> just, just Man, saying. I, I think Kuzman minus 300 is more than fair. I'm not playing it, but I think it's more than fair. I think I, I capped him like somewhere between minus 400 and minus 500. He's going to fucking smash the guy. He's yeah, he's he trying is. to make statements still. Like, you know, yeah. it's like, like Burns fight. Like, obviously the second mass would all fight like. He's trying, like he's trying to totally get rid of that narrative. He's boring. Like he's not trying. He's trying to finish guys. He's trying to knock guys out. Like, also, everybody's talking about the line and the value. It seems to be the the biggest like discussion. What is Colby going to do differently on the feet? Because for me, a big question is which side is Colby going to going to circle to circle? You know what I mean? The first time he was going towards Usman's right hand because he was go he was getting kicked to the body. That kick was was money. He was getting hurt. 
So he was he was choosing to go to, towards his his power hand. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't think he can get past two months. Yeah, man, he's going to get really fucked up. <laughs> he's going to get fucked up. I tweeted and, this and Usman, Usman, Usman is going to win the battle for the dominant angle, uh, righty, lefty, you know, it's there, it's going to happen. And his right hand is going to be like, boom, boom, straight to his face all night long because he's going to kick him to the body again. It's going Got to it. be an awful beating. I, like, I am legit worried about you, Andre. Guys, it's late in Spain right now. You're going to have to give Magic a pass. Like He's very very good at what he does, but he can't. not all of us can be right every single time. Um, so, again, thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to do a five-minute Q&A. If anyone has questions about any of the fights on Saturday, anything else, ask ask away, ask us, ask Big Ev. Again, Ev, appreciate you coming on. Of course, boys. Appreciate it. It's been great. We also have Canelo versus Plant. Big, big fight. Who you got? We talked about this, I think, in one episode. One of the first ones, someone asked something like, we play we play plant now? I said I was willing to play plant plus 350 and he's plus 700 almost. So, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Canelo is obviously great. He's obviously top three pound for pound. Some people think he's number one. I don't think he has faced someone like plant in a long time. Plant is a full-fledged super middleweight. Great job. He's very good at fighting tall and long. He's going to move. He can move for 12 rounds. Canelo obviously has to cut the ring on him and go to the body and has big power and everything, but I think this line is off. I think Plant is somewhere between plus 150 and plus 300 in reality. I know that is a wide range, but still that is very far from plus 700 or plus 600. So My, my concern is I don't think Plant is going to knock him out. And to win against Canelo and to get awarded the decision... Because the judges love him, you have to win seven or eight very clear rounds. So, yeah. Did you I see the know. question? Um, who do you guys think are some of the legit coaches in MMA? What do you guys got? I will probably be the best one, but I don't have time. <laughs> that was my answer, too. I was going to say magic. Trevor Whitman is a legit trainer. I never put much into trainers. People overrate these things. I think it's more on the fighter. But Trevor Whitman is one of these guys that you can see his his print on the fighters. You know what I mean? He's changing Usman. He's he's going. He's doing great things for Usman and for Rose and for Gaethje. He's a very good trainer and he gives very good advice in the corner. I think because fighters just just go to the corner and trainers are like, oh, who's tired? Oh. You have you have this for your family. I mean, what the fuck? You are a professional. You're supposed to, to give him some technical advice. I think the uh, I think the MMA masters coaches are the best coaches in the world. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need the degenerate parlays of the week. Uh, I gotta. I have uh, not played any parlay yet, but uh, I, I can I can make one. I saw fast. one. Someone commented earlier the Lamborghini parlay. I think it was it was Zhang fifth round and Curtis round three. That's a good one. I approve. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe throw in a Barnett by knockout in there too. <laughs> Barnett first round knockout. <laughs> All right. I, I got you guys right here. Covington wins in round one plus 2,200. Parlayed with uh, Gaethje Chandler doesn't go the distance. Parlayed with Mikolaitis wins by submission plus 1,300. That's mine. Man, you are crazy. That is going to get busted first leg with with Covington. What are you doing? Head kick KO, baby. Um, <laughs> um, Gian Vilante by third round submission is plus 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 seventy five hundred. I may be adding to this fight. Seventy five to one. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Plus seventy five hundred. Man, I yeah, don't know. Nuts. Yeah, I, I I was going to play Chandler round one. Ode Osborne round one and Curtis round three. That is like plus a million. Someone said Colby versus Poirier. Who wins? Colby with literally... Man, man, Colby Poirier. fucking smashes Poirier. Like, yeah, um, like he grapples him for five rounds, no problem. Big Ab, Ohio State by a million? By a billion. <laughs> billion. Lay the 15. Saturday at 12. Nebraska. And Nebraska is actually, they're, they're weirdly like... They're weirdly much better than the record says that they should have beat Michigan and Michigan State, hundred percent. But yeah. obviously by a billion. I love it, Andrew. What did you think of Colby's nickname for Jamai? It's a good one. one. It's a good one. I listened to that in the gym and I was laughing out loud. People were like looking at me. It was really funny. Um, what are you guys' most confident pick of two sixty eight? Ev, you want to start this one? 
Yeah, honestly, it's funny because I feel like I'd have the same answer, but Usman. That's that's honestly how I felt too. I'm dead serious. Like I just like I just don't see how Kobe wins. I I, I just don't. Usman and me, he's almost get. I'm almost starting to like him too much. Like I just start. I like start to believe he's just like Superman. Like it's even him. He just he just even just the way he carries himself. He just has this like, like he just has the men. Like he's so physically strong and like good. His stand up's got so much better. But I think just up here, like he just like isn't gonna lose. Like I just don't see how he loses. Yeah, it's it's strange because when you hear the guy talk and you you see him move, he doesn't look like the same guy as in the cage. In the cage, he's a different beast. He's an animal. Even even like when he didn't touch gloves with Gilbert Burns, I was like, this yeah. dude, like he just he he just locks in differently than I think other guys do. And even gets rocked early in that fight and ends up just breaking him, just breaking his soul. To where he yeah, just gets crying in the middle of the cage after the fight. He, he could be a superstar, but. He's 70 IQ, he cannot dress, he cannot talk, so that is a big issue <laughs> with him. But he can fight, man. Oh, yes, he can fight. Yeah, I, I don't know who's dressing the guy. He should sue and go to court. He's going to be the, um, who's gonna be the number two pound for pound in the world after Colby on Saturday night. So my, my most confident pick is Colby, um, and I think that's going to wrap it up. My uh, most confident pick is who's man inside the distance, by the way. Yeah, he's going that, that that is going to, solid, to solidify him as second after Peter Jan, I think, in the pound for pound list. Yeah. Jan, Jan win. live bet last week was sweet. He, Jan, after like a round and a half, was like minus 188 last week. I took that. Man, everyone was betting Sandag and all this. Where is all this value? Shut the fuck up. I was telling everyone, Peter Jan, baby. Here's the truth. Any Bellator picks? Um, I don't feel like going through these right now. It's a bunch of low level fights. I have bets for <laughs> Magic. I, 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 I watched like the. The event, I am like, no, fuck this shit. Yeah, I have a few plays. If you want them, ask on Twitter, but I'm not going to go over these right now. Um, Ev, appreciate you coming on. We got to have you yeah, again sometime. Time. Let me know, let me know um, where you're sitting in the fights. I'll come say what's up at some point. And uh, Magic, as always. Oh, we just, hit a, we just hit 100 views real quick for the first time ever. So that's, that, that, that's a good question, man. Who is this guy? Gary yeah. Kumedan. This guy knows MMA. Hernandez is going to destroy Oliveira. <laughs> I really hope they, they put Hernandez as backup for the title fight. Hernandez destroys Oliveira inside one minute. All right. On that note, thanks again for coming out. Um, 100 viewers, super pumped about that. Like and subscribe if you made it this far. Ev, thanks for coming on. Enjoy the fights this weekend. Of course. Appreciate it, boys. Good yeah, luck. Yeah, big time. Thank you, man, for coming. And this yeah. week, we don't have a guest yet, but we got... We can only go up from F, so I'm going to try to get Conor, Mc <laughs> Conor McGregor. I think it's good, good guest for next week. <laughs> I'm going to try. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Talk to you soon, of course. Appreciate